glad that you're with us today. Thank you for sticking with us. Third week now we're doing this thing. We are glad to be here in the house of God to worship him, to celebrate him, and to just see what the Lord is going to do among us. Amen? Amen. And I'm trusting that today is going to be a powerful day. Uh, Lord willing, at the end, I want to just pray with people, pray for people. If you need healing in your body or maybe there's something else going on, I want to just trust God to do something powerful amongst us. Amen? But uh, today, just announcement-wise, just remind you, Wednesday night, we're studying the book of Job together again at the Yakos house up in North Lake, and we're going to have a great time. I'm with that next week, Angela and I are going to be in Montana, uh, planned long before this venture, but Reverend James is going to be preaching, so you want to come out and hear that because I've heard him, he's great. Um, how many have heard James before? Reverend James, he's yeah, awesome. Yeah. So come on out, I'm sure there'll be like 50 people here that week for you, so that would be awesome. Um, but we're just trusting God to do great things. How many are praying for the church? Amen. Amen. Keep praying that God will just add his blessing and do the work that we know only he can do. And we need it. Let's pray right now and ask for the Lord's help. Father, we thank you for the chance to gather in your name. And at this moment, this is your house, God. These are your people. And we're trusting, Father, that you would speak to us today. God, move in this worship time. God, I pray that your word would be full of power. And God, that your anointing would be rich in this place today, Father. As we worship and magnify your name, God, to you be the glory. To you be the honor, God. Let us hear you. Let there be a, a sense, a heavy sense of the Shekinah glory of God in your temple today. And I pray that you just anoint Wendy and Angela as they lead us in worship, God. I pray they do more than just sing songs that we know they do. God, let them come forth and truly lead us into the presence of your goodness, God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and yeah. ladies. You can stand, you can sit. But just preparing for this week's worship, the Lord just says, I want them to soak in my presence. I want them to experience who I am. So I just want to encourage you with all that you have engaged this morning in the worship of our Savior. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and he desires to be with us today. How amazing is that? Hallelujah.
Jesus. Let's just take a moment. Just praise the church. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. We speak your name. Praise
study, Esther, and just the providence of God and how we got speaking about that. That there was just nothing that caught God off guard. How awesome is that, church? There's not a moment that he is surprised. There's not a moment that something happens in your life that he's like, what? What happened? No. He is already, he's already there.
worshiping you in your presence, to just opening your word and hearing what you have to say to us today, Lord. Father, we just open our hearts. Lord, we will not fall on deaf ears or deaf spirit today. Lord, we will leave different than what we came. And we give you honor. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Mark chapter 12, verse 30 says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Yeah. And Jesus is speaking here, and he basically says, love God with everything you have. And then he says something interesting at the end. He says, this is the first commandment. And he's referring to the Ten Commandments. And in the Ten Commandments, the first commandment is found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. And God says, you shall have no other gods before me. Now, the only way for that to happen is what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, love God with everything you have, your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And when you do that, when you love God with your whole being, you're making Him number one. Nothing else will be above Him. Ladies and gentlemen, God is calling you and I to make God number one in our lives. Because it is so easily, it's so easy in this world to put other things above them. We can put technology above them, social media above them, sports, movies. We can even put people above, above them, like celebrities or maybe even people that we know. Now, all those things are not evil or bad, but they can become evil or bad if we make them a God. And God's saying, make me number one. Come back to me. Make me number one again. Because when we make God number one, then everything else will fall into place. Right. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your people here this morning. And I pray that, God, our hearts would be turned to you again, oh God. And I pray that, God, if we have made something above you, that, God, we repent today, God. And that you, God, that you would come and cleanse us with the blood of Jesus, that you would forgive us of our sins, Lord. And we ask, Lord, right now, Lord God, if there is something above you in our own personal lives, that you would knock down those idols, Lord God. Break those idols, Lord God. Break the chains of idolatry now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, let us come back to you, Father God. Let, let, let our love for you be so overwhelming that we got to tell everybody that we see about you, God. Bless us this morning, Lord God, and let us make you number one and you only, oh God. Bless us now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Man, you may be seated. We want to take a moment this morning and have communion together. And so I'm going to ask that the elements for communion be passed out. And I'm trusting that obviously there are the little containers with the bread on top and the juice in the bottom. So just peel the top layer first. It would be easier to then get to the bread and then go right ahead and begin to serve that. As we do, I want to read the scripture and I want to just remind it. Um, you know, lots of churches we say, hey, you don't have to be a member here to, to have communion. Well, this is our first time together on a Sunday morning, so everybody's invited. The only prerequisite in the Bible is that we know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen? So let us have communion together and, and enjoy this wonderful time that really unites us together. Isn't that true? Um, because it's the one thing that brings us together. Thank you. It's the name of Jesus. It's his work on the cross. It's what unifies us as the body of Christ. Thank the Lord for that today. So I want to read the scripture out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And as we read that together today, I want us to just take a moment and kind of meditate on the Lord. Maybe take a moment and thank Him for the work that He's done on the cross so that we could have this thing we call salvation. We have the promise of heaven and our, our blessed hope. Amen. So let's be thankful today. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says in verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death 
until he comes. Thank the Lord today. Let's take just a moment. Maybe there's something in our life we need to ask God to forgive us of. Maybe there's something we need to just kind of make a fresh commitment to the Lord. Would you do that even now in this moment? Ask the Lord to speak to your heart. Then we're going to pray over each element. We're going to receive them together in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the work of your son, Lord, you coming and dying on the cross like you My father-in-law, Pastor Doug, would you mind praying over the bread this morning, please? Heavenly Father, we join here today to partake and to worship you. And Lord, we thank you for your broken body. That was broken for us. Bless us now as we as we partake together. And we'll just give you the glory for it all because we love you with all of our hearts. I pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Let's eat together. Praise you. Let's pray over the cup. Mandy, could I bother you to pray over the cup, please? Father, we just thank you for your sacrifice that you give for us, for the blood that you shed that we might be healed that our brokenness might be taken away by all the sacrifices you made for us on that cross for you suffered the shame for our sin. Lord, guide us and direct our path. Let this bring healing to our bodies in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's drink together. Praise you. Praise you. Just take a moment more. Thank the Lord today for his goodness, his love, his forgiveness, his healing. Amen.
awesome. Can we thank Angela and Wendy for you guys helping us, serving us in this way? We're just going to jump into the Word of God this morning together. Turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 2. If I get my tablet caught up with us in time, we'll be in great shape. Today I want to talk to you about being a stretcher bearer, being someone that brings somebody to the Lord. Maybe not just in salvation, but if somebody needs prayer, we're prayer warriors for them. We're somebody that has a conversation with them. We're somebody that helps to point them to Jesus because we know that people need the Lord. Would you agree? Oh, yes. People need the Lord. And we are those vessels that are out there because God has called us to, to share the goodness of Jesus Christ with others. And I'll be honest, there's times that I shy away from it. I don't know what to always say. Can anybody identify with me on that? Um, we don't always know what to say. We don't know if they are ready or not. We don't know if there's too many people around maybe listening or not. I went down to the motorcycle shop yesterday and I bought me a vest to ride my Harley with because I'm getting crazy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and when I was there, there were a bunch of guys hanging out in the shop and um, talking and somebody had asked if I was in the military at one time because obviously when you look at this physique you think warrior <laughs> right that's, that's exactly what I think of anyhow I think warrior um, and I said no I wasn't uh, in the military and the guy goes well good thing he goes you're not messed up in the head like me and man my heart goes out because my dad's a Vietnam vet I totally get it I understand what people that were in the military had gone through. But I thought after we left, I got thinking in the car, like, should I have said something right there? Should I have mentioned something about Jesus? I'll be honest, I failed, I think, for a moment. There was an opportunity I could have said, well, I could pray with you, or you know what, I know somebody that can fix that mentality, that mind that you have need of changing. And um, you know what, we make mistakes sometimes, don't we? we fail. But God is calling us to be stretcher bearers. That'll make sense in a minute when we look at Mark chapter 2. And I think he's calling us to be more bold. And I'm just sorry, I know we're running short of time here and kick us out pretty quick here, but uh, the thing is, friends, we sometimes look at situations like I did and make an excuse, maybe it wasn't God's will or maybe it wasn't his timing, and that may be true. That could be true. Maybe he wants me to go down there more often. That would be fun, too. Maybe I'll bump into him again. But you know what? We've got we've to be a little more bold in the day in which we live. So I did a Bible study years and years ago about the return of Jesus Christ, and we know one thing about the return of Christ. He's going to come quickly, right? Yes. Suddenly. And his return is imminent. And there's anything that the return of Jesus Christ does for us, it, it does two things, in my opinion. Number one, it makes us want to be prepared for his return. How many are preparing for his return, right? But the other thing is we need to help prepare others and tell others about Jesus Christ. Because if we really believe Jesus is coming quickly, and I believe he is, we've got to help tell others about Jesus Christ. Amen? So pray for me. I'm going to pray for you that God would build us in our taking the opportunity. I need Sills' boldness, right? We all need that boldness. And that's what the power of the Holy Spirit is for. I just got to get back on my game a little bit. But let's look at Mark chapter 2, and let's hear what the Lord is saying here today. It says in Mark chapter 2, verse 1, When he came back to Capernaum several days afterward, it was heard that he was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was a, no longer any room. It's kind of like church today, right? Every, even near the door, he was speaking the word to them, and the place was filled. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And being unable to get to him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had dug an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic was lying. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven. But there were some of the scribes sitting there, reasoning within their hearts, Why does this man speak this way? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus was aware in his spirit 
that they were reasoning that way within themselves said to them, why are you reasoning about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say arise and take up your pallet and walk? But in order that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, take up your pallet and go home. And he arose and immediately took up his pallet and went out of the sight of all so that they were all amazed and were glorifying God saying, we have never seen anything like this. We need to see God move like this more. Would you agree? Yes. We want to see people amazed at the goodness and the power and the presence of God. Father, we bow before you today. Ask your blessing on this message. These few feeble words that I've prepared today, God, we ask that you would empower them by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would stir us up and challenge our hearts this morning because, God, you're calling us to be stretcher bearers. You're calling us to be people that take the gospel to other people. Forgive us, God, when we fail to do that, but, God, open up more opportunities so that we can do it more often. Give us practice. Give us opportunity, God. And give us victories, God. I know some plants, some water, but God, it's you that gives the increase. God, we're asking for you to increase today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm here to tell you today, we serve a God that is a miracle-working Savior. If you agree with that, would you say amen or grunt or something? Yeah? We believe that. He makes the lame to walk. He causes blind eyes to see. He even is able to make the dead come to life again. He's able to make the dead come to life again. They see it even today in this world that we live in. In fact, even in the scripture, we read of how the winds and the waves obey Jesus. That's pretty powerful. Jesus is a miracle working savior. You'll remember in Luke chapter seven, verse 18 to 23, John the Baptist was wanting to know for certain <laughs> that Jesus is the real deal. You might remember in the scriptures, the disciples of John reported to him all these things, it says in verse 18, and they summoned two of his disciples, speaking of Jesus' disciples. John sent them to the Lord and saying, are you the expected one, or do we need to look for somebody else? And when the men had come together, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, are you the expected one, or should we wait for somebody else to be coming? And at that time, he cured many people of diseases and afflictions and evil spirits. He granted sight to many who were blind. And he answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And, he, and blessed is he who keeps from stumbling over me. Praise God. Jesus is the real deal. I really, in my mind, expect a little bit more from that today. This is the Christ that we serve. This is the Jesus that we worship this morning. Did you sense his presence here today? God is here with us this morning. He is the real deal. And the bottom line is there is proof that Jesus is who he said he is. He's the son of God. We see the miracles that Jesus did, the many wondrous things that he accomplished. And he went back and told John the Baptist, because John was getting ready to lose his head. And he's saying, are you worth dying for? Are you worth dying for? And Jesus didn't give him a yes or no. He said, go back and tell him what you just saw take place right here. He knew something in his spirit would recognize this. This is the real deal. Praise the Lord. We serve a God that's a real God, that's a powerful God. And the truth is not based on theory. It's not based on just hearsay or, hey, I'm going to tell you this is what he's supposed to be doing. It's based on the facts that Jesus, in fact, went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. That's what Acts chapter 10 talks about. That's what they testify of, that Jesus did these things. But it was prophesied in Isaiah 35 that when the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, and shall the lame jump and leap as a heart, 
and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness they shall, the water shall break out and streams in the desert. I think way, way, way back when we first got together and we're doing some devotionals together, we read those scriptures together. That God is a God that breaks forth things in dry and weary places. Yeah. That he makes streams come in the desert place. I want to tell you today, God is in the business of doing those things. Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. These are observable deeds that God says, here is the stuff that the promised Messiah will do. And the contemporaries of Jesus' day recorded this in the scripture for us, and they tell, told other people about it. And what's going on here is Jesus is doing his miracles, and he is demonstrating his authority, his power, his responsibility. And if you remember what we talked about last week, he has given us those keys. Do you remember? He's handed them off for us to now go about doing good and healing and praying and leading people to Christ. It's our responsibility now. We do it in his name for his glory. On another occasion, Jesus proves this fact in Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. He got into a boat, he crossed over, came to his own city, and behold, they're bringing him a paralytic, lying on a bed. Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, take courage, my son. Your sins are forgiven. Similar story here. Jesus knowing their thoughts. Why are you thinking evil in your hearts, he says. For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk. But in order that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, rise up, take your bed and go home. He rose and he went home. When the multitude saw this, they again were filled with awe. They glorified God, it says who had given such authority to men. And with all that said, I feel it's safe to say that it is something God is requiring of us, expecting of us, now placing in our hands that we would bring others to Jesus as well. Many times you see people in the scriptures, they brought people to Jesus because they knew that he was the one that could help them. The disciples had people bringing them to bringing others to Jesus because they knew that they were the ones to have the goods. They failed like I did. Remember the little one that they had to bring to Jesus because the disciples didn't know exactly what to do, and Jesus was like, "How long am I going to have to do?" You know, we need to learn, we need to grow, but we need to exercise it in order to get to where God wants us to be. We've got to begin to do this thing. So today, I want to just tell you. A few simple ingredients, if you will, of a miracle. Number one is four burdened men. What we see in the scripture here, Mark chapter 2, verse 3, they came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. Now, we know that there's four guys here burdened enough to feel the need to bring this man to Jesus. Thank God for burdened people. Thank God for people that are burdened with the needs of others. I think of Jesus and his compassion when I hear that kind of thing. The Bible says he had compassion on people. He cared about people. There's times, Angela and I would be walking around out in the world, you know, or living in the grocery store or wherever, restaurants or whatever we're doing, and you see people and your heart just goes out to them. You drive down the street and people are, got their signs on the corner and you're like, man, I'd love to know what their story is. I wonder what's going on with their life. You know the sign, you know, just trying to, feed my family and they're, they're destitute. Man, our hearts ought to be filled with compassion. We need to have a burden to bring people to Christ. This is something these guys had. But we don't know much about them other than there's four guys, right? We don't know what their names are. We have no idea about what their jobs were. We don't know if they skipped work that day. We don't know if they didn't have We don't know any of this stuff. We don't know how old they were. We don't know what their birthdays are. We don't know what kind of clothing they wore. We don't know how much money they had. We don't know how long these guys walked carrying this paralytic either. But in reality, none of that matters because that doesn't matter with Jesus either. It doesn't matter 
if we could label these guys and name these guys, then we begin to say, hey, well, I gotta be like guy number one, I gotta be like guy number three, I gotta be like guy number, no, we just need to be somebody that cares about somebody. And that kind of compassion doesn't come from trying to be like this guy or that guy. It comes from trying to be like Jesus because he is a God of compassion. He's a God that cares about other people. You know, it doesn't really matter. And he's no respecter of persons. He's not saying we've got to be like those guys. He's saying you've got to be like me. And when you're like me, it doesn't matter if you fit this form or that form. But let us consider what we do know about them. We do know this, they had a sick friend. They had somebody in their life that needed something from Jesus. They couldn't fix it themselves. They couldn't make it happen themselves, but they did know there was somebody else that could. They had a sick friend. And the tremendous thing here that we need to understand is many of us have those that need Jesus. There's people we know that don't know him as Savior and Lord. There's people we know that need healing in their body. There's people we know that have emotional needs. We know people that have mental needs. We know people that have all kinds of things going on in their life, and we can't fix it for them. We're a friend for them. We sit there and we listen to them, but we've got to help get them to Jesus. The next thing we know is that they believe that Jesus was the only person that could meet the need. He's the only guy. My, 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 don't we need to get that kind of stubbornness about the things that we encounter with people, that only Jesus can fix this. Only Jesus can correct the issue that we're talking about here. It's only Jesus. And finally, we know they were concerned about their friend enough to do something about it. I think that's a tough one, isn't it? (laughs) If we're really honest, that's a tough one. Because we're busy, we're active, we talk, we pray, and we carry on with our life. Maybe sometimes we've got to take some time and get them with somebody else we know have maybe been through something like that, can help them and take some time out of our schedule to maybe really sit down, say we need to pray through this kind of thing, or we need to study the scriptures through on this situation. We need to do something that maybe is a little bit more than what the normal is. That's that get her done attitude that we need in the body of Christ today. In this day, in this age, we look at the world around us, we know there's people that need the Lord. And we have to be able to make some time. Why do we need to be motivated? Why do we need to get people to Jesus? Because when we get people to Jesus, He changes them. Their lives are transformed because of that. Because of that. We've got to get people to Jesus. You know what? There's a lot of people in this world today. They have no hope. They have no life in them. I was telling my father-in-law, I went to 7-Eleven down on Beach and Golden Triangle about a year ago, walked inside and got me a soda. You know me, that's my addiction. Um, Went up to the register to pay for it. Young lady standing there had her name tagged on and her name said, Death. That's what she named herself. Man. There's people in this world that need the Lord. Reminded me of a young lady who came to our church back when we were pastor my home church. She had her license plate. Uh, it didn't say death, but something very similar on it. Just gave up all hope, just struggling, but came wandering into church one day, and gave her heart to the Lord, and God turned her life around. That's why we're here doing what we do. That's why we spend time and invest in people, because Jesus is the kind of guy that takes people from death to life again. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord for that. That's why it's worth it. we got to be people that do not just get Jesus, but we're people that need to get people to Jesus that are going to die and be lost in their sin if they don't get to him. And that's the whole entire world. Here's the thing. we got to get motivated. Have you ever heard the story about four other people? Their names are everybody, somebody, and anybody, and nobody. You ever hear the story? It's a little story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There was an important job to be done, and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job, and everybody thought that anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. That's pretty good. I didn't even have a tongue twister. 
Man, that's the anointing right there. <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? Is everybody else's job, you know, I've been a pastor for, man, 28 years, roughly, or something like that. And everybody, and if you've been in ministry, you, you know what it's like to have everybody expect you to do it. Pastor or so-and-so, I'm going to bring somebody to you. You need to talk with them. Hmm? I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Pastors, wives, right? We know what it's like. God has anointed us all to do that, to minister to them. It's everybody's job. It's all of us. We all have something we can give because we got Jesus in us. Thank the Lord for that. It's our job. It's not just four guys. It's not just these unnamed guys. It's not everybody. It's not anybody. It's not somebody. We are those people. And you know what? The early church was not a group that waited for somebody else either. It says in Acts chapter 8, verse 4, Therefore those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. <clears throat> now we think of scattering. And Jesus, you know, God used scattering in the scriptures many times to accomplish his will. And it wasn't to make us upset or disturb us about things. It was to continue to do the work that he's called us to do. And sometimes God uses circumstances to get us to a place that he wants us to be. Can I give you a testimony? I think the Lord may have done that to me and Angela. He got it in my son's heart. I want to move to Fort Worth, Texas and live there. We had debated on moving to Texas, but honestly, I love Maine. I'm from Maine. I was born and raised in Maine, and we lived in a beautiful place in southern Maine. Alex one day says, well, when are we going to talk about it? And I said, someday. <laughs> and finally one day he goes, we're moving. And I was like, hold up. Aren't we going to talk about this? He's like, we've talked. We're going. And we helped our, move our son and his wife and our two grandsons down here. And then my wife and I had a nice 20-hour conversation on the way home <laughs> after doing that. Began to think about what can the Lord do? What's he maybe want us to do? I was talking to Randy today about his own move and maybe some similarities and what in the world. And Angela, we tried to sell our house some years before. We wanted to move into a different place, a different house. We couldn't sell our house for nothing. So I was like, all right, if we can sell our house, nobody wants our house. If we can sell our house... Maybe that's the thing. Then maybe then that's the Lord in this. Maybe whatever. And I was thinking in the back of my head, you know, you know what this means, right? It ain't gonna happen. It's fine. I'm safe. I'm gonna be where I wanna be. Well, you know what? Put our house on the market. They gave us the number. Say, how much do you owe in your house? And I told them, and they're like, congratulations to you. So we are gonna make some money on this deal. And so. We put the house on the market, and I'm like, sure, you're a realtor. You're supposed to be positive, and you know you can sell this thing, right, realtors? Um, and did, would you know the first person looked at our house over that open house weekend was the very person that bought our house. And then we no longer had a home. And then we had to get in a car and drive all the way here. And guess what went out? God scattered. God did some scattering. You follow me today? God did some scattering. Because he has people and places he wants us to be. God does scattering. God does, man, we look around, we're all transplanted basically here. Are you from Texas? You are. Oh, who is from Texas that's sitting in this room? One person. Because... I was actually born in San Diego. Oh, see? But he's scattered us. Potentially. For the purpose to bring all of our paths together yep. to collide at one point in one time so that we can do the work that he's called us to do in this area god has got a purpose for us here can you say in yes. he's got a reason he's called us together in this little town of justin which i actually love little justin i think it's a great little community he's called us here to spread the gospel to be stretcher bearers, to bring people to Jesus. Yes. Did I expect to be here? Absolutely not. Did you expect to be? Probably not. But God's got us here. God's got a purpose in it. I'm confessing it today. And Jesus wants us to be like 
these guys. I gotta hurry up, time's ticking, they're gonna lock the doors in a minute. Number two, we also find a broken roof. There's a lot I could say here. Look at verse four. Being unable to get to him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. Somebody started cracking the roof open in my house, there's gonna be problems, I'll tell you that much right now. They dug an opening. They let down the pallet on which the paralytic was lying there. This speaks to me about so many things. I could spend a half an hour talking about this, I'm sure, but I won't. But when I think about it, I think about the boldness of these young men, old men, I don't know, middle-aged men. I have no idea. But it speaks to the boldness that these guys had to do something that was unorthodox, that was probably not acceptable, that was probably going to be frowned upon. Because again, you come into my house, start climbing up on the roof and ripping it apart, Lou, what are we going to do? We're going to get them down. Yeah. <laughs> I got a couple shotguns in my house. <laughs> I got more than that. Um, we're going to get them down off that roof. You're not going to be digging a hole in my place, but the boldness, the passion, the desire, the, the, the just demand in their heart, they had to get this guy to Jesus. Wouldn't let them stop there. Makes me think about barriers. I had a mental barrier yesterday. Sometimes we have mental barriers. This isn't the time, this isn't the place. Can God speak to somebody in a motorcycle shop about Jesus? Sure he can. We have barriers, obstacles, things that stand in our way that tell us, I don't, I don't, I don't miss this stuff. We need to pray for them. Let me pray first on this thing. These guys could have put the paralytic down and said, man, we've really got to figure this thing out. We've got to wait this deal out. Maybe sometime those people get out in a few hours and then we can, you know, get... Hopefully then Jesus isn't worn out. But he is Jesus. He shouldn't get tired, right? Because he's full of God. No, he did have moments. He went away into the wilderness to pray too, didn't he? They didn't scratch. They just said, you know what? There's a barrier here. We've got to overcome it. I think it's Zig Ziglar had this statement. He said, when obstacles arise, you change your direction to reach your goal. You do not change your decision to get there. I know that's not scripture, but that's a good line. That's a good line. And it's a reminder to us today that there are barriers sometimes we have to overcome so God can bring breakthroughs. Breakthroughs aren't going to come if we don't break through. <laughs> right? You can't have a breakthrough if you don't break through. And those are the things that strengthen us. Like little chicks coming out of their egg. They always say, don't go ahead and pop that egg open. You let that chick do it themselves. Because in that process, in that process of them pecking away and pushing and struggling and fighting out, it's the very thing that gives them the strength to live outside of the egg because they had to force their way through it. You know what? There's times we're going to have to struggle in our fight of faith too. But it's the very thing that's going to give you the muscles to stand on your own two feet to live for the Lord and serve Him like that. That's what barriers do for us. Instead of thinking of the barriers and just going along our way and kicking the dust and saying, ah, it's not going to do anything. There's barriers. There's barriers as we're trying to overcome and build this church. There's going to be things we run into and questions that we're going to have and problems that are going to arise. We just have to keep plowing forward because God is the one that has the mission in mind and where he's taking us. We just keep pushing, keep believing because God has made us overcomers. Has he not? It says in 1 John 4, 4, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to hurry. This is Angela's fault. She sang the lob so It says there, you are, you're from God, little children. You have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he that's in this world. It says in 1 John 5, 4, for whatever is born of God overcomes this world. Isn't that awesome? Romans 8, 37, but in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loves us. It's in our Christian DNA to be overcomers. God has built it in us. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ, he made you an overcomer. That's who you are. That's a part of who you are spiritually now. You follow me? Because he's in us. Christ is in us. And what did they do when they saw this barrier? They looked up. 
Psalm 121 says it so clear. It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. These guys had to look up because they saw that roof and said, I'm going to dig that roof open. I'll drop this guy right down on Jesus. <laughs> they didn't let the barrier stop him. And it reminds me of that woman with the issue of blood. She interrupted another miracle to get her own miracle. What an arrogant woman. <laughs> She crawled through the crowd underneath everything. She could have got stampeded and trampled, but she was so like, I've got to get to Jesus, I'm pressing through. That's the DNA we have in us. Because God is in us. Can you say amen? They looked up, they found their help, and what's the third thing? An empty bed. Mark chapter 2, I don't have time to really dissect all of this. But it says in verse 5, Jesus saw their faith, said to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. He knew people were skeptical. He began to talk in verses 10, 11, 12. Um, you know, he says what's easier, this, that, or the other thing. But he says to let you know, he told this guy to take up his pallet and go home. And what we see transpiring here is that Jesus saw the faith of these of these people that carry these stretcher bearers. He saw their faith. He responded to their faith. He saw the faith of this guy that let himself get climbed up and carried however long, put up through a roof, dropped down through a hole. That guy just laid there taking all this. He saw his faith and responded to it. And he said, you know what? Your sins are forgiven. And you know what? I'll give you one better. Get up off your mat and walk home. This is what God can do through us. I don't have time to really dissect a lot of this, but what am I trying to say today? I'm going to turn my tablet off. Would you come over here? And I'll give you your thing back. What is he saying to us today? He's saying to us a couple of things, I think. Number one, he wants us to be stretcher bearers. He wants us to be like those four guys, not the other four that I told you the story about. He wants us to be like the four in the scriptures. He wants us to be those that carry others to Jesus, that point the way to Jesus, that bring them to Jesus. But we also need to be people that are willing to be bold and break through barriers. Because you know what? There's empty mats that need to be em There's mats that need to be emptied. There's places where people are stuck that need to be unstuck from there. Your neighbors, your friends, your family. And today I want to even just be bold and go a step further. And I want to pray real quick. Well, I'll take a few minutes. But I want to pray for people that need to maybe get off your own mat today. It could be a physical healing you need in your body. It could be emotional something that's got you stuck in something. Today, Jesus is here to do that work. But with heads bowed, eyes closed, let's pray. Father, I thank you today for the word of God that says so much to us. That, God, we don't have the time to sit here really dissect it all, but what it's done is it stirred up our faith this morning. It's maybe spanked us a little bit to tell us to get up and moving. It's reminded us again, God, that barriers do come, but those barriers don't have to stop us. They could be things we can break through with your power because, God, you're accomplishing your goodness through us. I pray, Father, for friends and family that we have talked with and those that we've ministered to, God, that need to get up off their mat and walk. Help us, God, to be able to take it just a step further so that, Father, we can see their lives transformed by you, Jesus. God, I pray that you would let us truly walk in the power of your anointing in such a way that we can minister to them in a fresh way, God. Give us a fresh anointing this morning, God. Give us a fresh touch of your spirit this morning, God. Give us discernment and understanding, God, so we know when to say something and when not to say something. Help us, God. Lead us, Lord. But Lord, let us be used by you to be like these stretcher bearers that get people to Jesus that need you, God. Father, I believe you've all brought us here for a purpose, and it's to do these things in this community together for the glory of God for the building of your kingdom. And Father, I pray that you would get all the glory and all the praise. And I just felt my heart when I was preparing 
that you know what, there might be some that need healing in their body, may need a touch in their body of some sort, maybe emotional, spiritual, I don't know what it is, but I want to encourage you to come up here and let us pray with you today. Real quickly, because time is short, and I don't want to point people out, but I know that Jeff's got a shoulder issue, I'd love to pray with him today. I know we've talked about Pam and her eyes, and I'd love to pray with her today. I'm not going to pray long prayers, because we don't have time. I want to be out of here in like three minutes. <laughs> But I do want to take time to pray. And I want to encourage folks like Lou and Jenny and Pastor James and, and others to come and pray. You know what? There's so few of us. Why don't we all just come pray together? But please come if you want prayer. And I want to do one thing. This is the Tony way. Don't look to me to pray. I want you to begin to lift up your hands and begin to say, God, I need you to touch me. Because he's the one doing the work, not me. I'm just going to agree with you. I'm just going to say, God, it's your work. And so begin to ask Him. Just begin to say, God, I need your touch in my body. I need your healing in this place. I need your ministry in this area of my life. And I'm just going to come alongside and agree with you. It's Jesus doing the work today. Well, let's just believe God to do the work. If you're mobile and you don't need anything, just follow around. Let's pray together. But God, we're just trusting you. So let's just take a moment and let's just lift up our hearts. Let's just look to Jesus because He's the healer. He's the deliverer. He's our salvation. So God, we're trusting you today, God. We're building this up, not because of me, not because of one another, but because of you, Jesus. So I pray in the name of Jesus for healing today in these eyes. God, no longer will there be degeneration, but God, but there'll be growth and healing. Eyesight will get better in the name of Jesus today, God. We give you glory. We give you praise, Jesus. Lord, I don't know what my brother Ross needs, but God, we're trusting that you're the one that's going to bring healing. Jesus, you're the healer today, God. We pray healing in Jesus' name. In every way, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, we praise you, Lord. God, we pray healing is complete in Jesus' name. No fear, no doubts, no questions, God. We trust you, God. Good reports from the doctors, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Be glorified. Be magnified. Give direction and understanding, God. Give clarity in what you want to do, God. But we pray healing in this body. Be well, God. Be well in Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know what needs to happen. God, you know what we're trusting for today, God. God, you're able. And God, you're mighty to do it. In Jesus' name, we pray and let it be done. God, I want to pray for James today, God, that you minister to these eyes, God, and Lord, other places in his body, God, that constantly need your touch and attention. God, we pray today, God, create a miracle in Jesus' name. God, you can do anything, God, and today we agree in Jesus' name. To you be the glory, God. To you be the honor, God. We pray for Wendy and her back, God, today. And Lord, if there's other things, be magnified, be lifted up, Jesus. Be our healer, God. We'll thank you. We'll praise you for it today. In Jesus' name, for mom and dad, God, you know what needs to happen. God, you know where in their bodies they need your touch, God, or emotional help or strength or peace or whatever it may be, God. Minister, Lord, we pray today, God. Jesus, we trust you today. Be magnified, be glorified, Jesus. Let our faith arise, God. Let our hearts be healed and strengthened, God. And God, send us out with a new fire like we've never had before, God. Be magnified. Minister, Lord, in areas that you know are deep within our hearts, God. Concerns and cares. But we thank you that you take care of them, Jesus. Lord, minister in those areas, God. We pray for Jeff. Which shoulder? Yes. Lord, I pray for Jeff today that you minister to this shoulder. Father, that you would put it back together, God. That you would bring healing today that only you can do, God. Give him greater mobility and strength in it, God, we pray in Jesus' name. Get ahead of the doctors. We're okay with that, God. Be magnified, we pray in Jesus' name. And God, I pray you fill us with testimony. Amen, Lord. If there's anything Denny needs, God, bless him, God, with it in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you today that you're a God that makes all things new. Make him new, God, I pray. Give him the desire of his heart for you, God. Take him deeper than he's ever gone before, God. Let him know you in a fresh, 
and powerful way, God. A new level in Jesus' name. I just, I pray that. I sense that. A new level in Jesus' name in his life. We pray today. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm about a minute over, but let's pray together. Father, I thank you today for your goodness. I thank you for the faith that I believe was built up in this place today in just a matter of minutes, God. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would send us out here, God, healed in our own bodies, God. If you're doing a work, God, I want to hear testimonies, how you're working, God. Let us not just end praying for that right now. Let us continue to pray for that, God. But Lord, send us out. Let us be a witness for you in our community and with those around us, God, and let us see the works done. Let us see your hand at work, God. It may be a slow work, but Lord, let us see your hand at work. We'll thank you and we'll praise you for it. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Lord. thank you so much for being here. God is good. He's going to continue to build what he's doing. I just sensed his presence here in a wonderful way. I hope you did as well. But so thank you so much. And God bless you. And please always forgive us because we kind of just go right to work. We don't always have time to shake hands. That's what Wednesday night.